In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Although today is the feast of St. Stephen, King of Hungary, I would like to offer the first of two reflections on tomorrow's saint, Pope Pius X. I am sure that St. Stephen would approve of this plan since he himself, as the readings for Matin says, obtained his royal crown from the Pope, and when he had been anointed king at the Pope's command, he offered his kingdom to the apostolic see. Furthermore, we might call to mind that when Prince Karl and Zita, his wife, the Habsburgs, met with Pope Pius X, he prophesied that Karl would soon be king of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, something that did not seem likely at the time, given that there were others in front of him in line for the throne. But the prophecy soon came true. And of all the countries that supported him the most was St. Stephen's Hungary. Turning to St. Pius X in his first encyclical, A Supremi Apostolatus, of October 4th, 1903, he made known to the whole world the program of his pontificate. To restore all things in Christ, he said, so that Christ may be all in all. To lead back mankind under the dominion of Christ. This done, we shall have brought it back to God. Now the way to reach Christ is not hard to find. It is the church. It was for this that Christ founded it, gaining it at the price of His blood, and made it the depository of His doctrine and His laws, bestowing upon it at the same time an inexhaustible treasury of graces for the sanctification and salvation of men. The duty has been imposed of bringing back to the discipline of the church human society, now estranged from the wisdom of Christ. The church will then subject it to Christ and Christ to God. Pope St. Pius X, to restore all things in Christ so that Christ may be all in all. That's his motto. That's what he started his pontificate out to do. Now, due to the intense pressure of the Enlightenment, which was running rampant, with the spread of rationalism and liberalism and naturalism in the 19th century, many theologians and priests started to adopt his principles by the time Pope Pius became Pope. They formed a new theological system that came to be known as modernism. Modernism attempted to wed the church with the modern age, making it more relevant. The modern age was rationalistic, naturalistic, humanistic. So consequently, the modernists sought to remove the divine from everything we believe, to remove the vertical, making all horizontal or natural. I think that's one of the easiest ways to understand modernism. Just keep that in mind. Modernism always wants to take out the divine. Remove the vertical. It's all just horizontal. Very humanistic, very natural. No miracles, no piety, no mystical body of Christ, etc., etc. They pretended to believe, holding all the doctrines of the church by name. Do you believe that the church is the one true church? Oh, sure, I believe that. But when they say they believe it, they mean something different. They mean, oh no, all men belong to the church. We're just more conscious of it than others. That's their idea. See? That's modernism. So they'll hold the outward name of a doctrine. Oh, I, I believe in hell. But it's empty. There's nobody there. And all of a sudden, it has no more meaning. See? That's another way to understand modernism. They'll hold the outward shell, the outward name, and then they gut it of its meaning and put something else in its place. And they say, see, we believe. We're not heretics. 
And the scary thing is, is that they do this with every single doctrine and belief of the church. So as a result, Pope Pius called it the sum of all heresies. It's very dangerous because it's everywhere and in everything that we believe, hold to be true and dear to us. Now, by the time Pope Pius took his office, he exclaimed that his errors had, quote, nearly reached the very bowels and veins of the church, end quote. He also said, quote, the rationalists are not wanting in their applause. And the most frank and sincere among them congratulate themselves on having found in the modernists the most valuable of all allies, end quote. We have friends inside the church. We're brothers. It's very scary to have that happen. In other words, atheists, masons, and whatnot on the outside saying, yeah, we've got all kinds of guys on the inside that believe like we do. What? The steps taken by Pope Pius X to find a remedy for this evil resulted in the decline of modernism in just a few years. The principal agitators were removed from teaching positions in the Catholic Church, and new impetus was given to philosophical and theological studies in keeping with the principles of St. Thomas Aquinas. Although firm in doctrine, Pius X nevertheless showed great kindness toward those who had gone astray. In 1908, he recommended to the new bishop of Chalon, France, you are going to be Father Loisy's bishop. Now, Loisy was the father of modernism, or at least he's been called that by many. And he was excommunicated because of his persistence in this heresy after many warnings. Pope Pius X said, Treat him with kindness, and if he makes one step towards you, make two steps toward him. I think sometimes people paint St. Pius to be this mean, austere, ruthless pope. Here he is trying to reconcile the one of the worst heretics of the time. So this was a concrete application of this principle that he said was to fight error without touching the individual. To fight error without touching the individual. To hate sin and error, but seek the salvation of the sinner. Like the curé of ours, whom St. Pius beatified, he did not miss an opportunity to do his enemies a good turn. Now, one day, a certain citizen of Mantua penned a newspaper article libeling his bishop when he was still bishop of that see. This was an offense in which he could have easily sought a jail sentence. Despite the advice of his assistants, the good bishop refused to prosecute or to take any other action. He said, what that poor man needs is prayer, not punishment. When afterwards this libeler took bankruptcy or went bankrupt, and it looked as though he really would go to jail after all, it was St. Pius who saved him by sending him money anonymously. Say that it is a gift from Our Lady of Perpetual Help, is what he told the person to tell him when he delivered the money. Yet modernism, so vigorously denounced by Pope St. Pius X, unfortunately did not disappear. In 1950, Pope Pius XII, in the encyclical Humani Generis, warned against various errors, many of which were related to modernism. The philosopher Jacques Maritain, not free of modernism himself by any means, stated in one of his books, written in 1966, the modernism of Pius X's time was a mere hay fever in comparison with the neo-modernist movement that was currently in vogue. During the general audience, 1972, January 19, Pope Paul VI denounced, quote, errors which could completely ruin our Christian conception of life and history. These errors were expressed in a typical manner in modernism, which under other names is still widespread, end quote. So there's Pope Paul VI admitting 
In 1972, yep, the church is rife with modernism. On September 14 of the same year, Cardinal Heenan, Archbishop of Westminster, echoed the Pope's declaration, observing that although the word heretic is no longer used in our times, heretics by no means cease to exist. Heresy number one is what we are accustomed to calling modernism. Modernism is back and will appear again as the primary threat to the church of tomorrow, he says. As authority of all sorts has become universally unpopular, the climate has never been more favorable towards a renewed attack on the authority of God and the magisterium of His church. The resurrection, the Holy Trinity, the immortality of the soul, the sacraments, the sacrifice of the Mass, the indissolubility of marriage, the rights of life for unborn children, of elderly and the incurably ill. All these doctrines accepted without problem by Catholics till now will very likely be the object of attacks in the church of tomorrow. Cardinal Heenan. The experience of the few decades reveals the truth of his analysis. Cardinal Joseph Siri of Genoa in his work Gethsemane, Reflections on the Contemporary Theological Movement, 1981, proves and verifies that modernism is alive and accepted and well in our times. He talked about Henri de Lubac, who uh, publishers like Ignatius Press print all they want. This man is a modernist. Cardinal Siri proves it. All this makes us appreciate the efforts, writings, and teachings of St. Pius X, and that we should seek to understand his writings and to review them again and again to keep ourselves free of this heresy. It's all over. It's wherever you turn. To think that we can keep free of it without studying and is rash. We are living in a time in which to keep our faith alive, we must study and know our faith. We must know it as it has always been known. And that is why tradition will keep us sane in this time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.